Good evening, everyone. We begin with breaking news. Buffalo police and homicide detectives are on the scene of a shooting on the east side. Buffalo police say one person has been shot and has serious injuries. This video is just coming into our newsroom from Dodge Street. Neighbors tell our photographer on the scene they heard more than a dozen shots fired. About half a dozen police vehicles responded and closed off the street. There are shell casings around a vehicle you can see here. We have reached out to a spokesperson for Buffalo Police for more information. Less than 24 hours ago, police were on the scene of another shooting. A 21-year-old man was shot on East Ferry around 1245 this morning. This is what the scene looked like when our photographer arrived to the 1000 block. You can see police there collecting evidence. A young man was taken to ECMC where he remains in critical condition tonight. There have now been four shootings since Wednesday. We are also following two developing stories out of Niagara County tonight. A baby, mother and grandmother are all in the hospital after a bad crash this evening. Niagara County Sheriff Jim Votor tells us two cars collided in the town of Heartland on Ridge Road between Orangeport Road and Heartland Road. It happened around 7 o'clock tonight. One vehicle was carrying a one-year-old child, a mother and a grandmother. Both adults were flown to ECMC with multiple injuries. The baby is in stable condition at Women and Children's Hospital. Sheriff Votor says the man driving the other vehicle sustained minor injuries and was treated at a Lockport hospital. We don't know yet what caused this crash. Just about an hour before that, a five-year-old child was flown to Women and Children's Hospital after her foot got caught underneath a lawnmower. Sheriff Votor tells us deputies responded to the 3200 block of West Lake Road in Wilson around 6 this evening. He tells us a family member was mowing the lawn when the child playing in the yard tried to jump on the lawnmower. The sheriff's office says the child's foot got caught in the mower and was severely damaged. The child is in stable condition right now. Family, friends, and hundreds of law enforcement laid to rest a town of Tonawanda police lieutenant. 33-year-old Thomas Deal lost a year-long battle to a rare form of leukemia earlier this week. Police officers from all over the region paid their final tribute to Deal. News 4 sat down with his family. Our Rachel Monjovi has more about his life and those final goodbyes. Rachel? Callan, it was apparent today how many lives were touched by this fallen officer. The streets near the funeral were packed with every town and city police cruiser. The loved ones say the impact he made on this community will still be here years down the road. Men and women dressed in blue lined the sidewalks outside St. Amelia's Roman Catholic Church. The officer said their final goodbyes to one of their own. He's our brother. Uh, he's my brother. Um, this is something that no police officer or, or no person should uh, really ever have to go through. 33-year-old Thomas Deal was a lieutenant for the town of Tonawanda Police Department. He joined the force at just 21 years old, becoming the youngest lieutenant in the department's history. What he accomplished in his 33 years was a lot, lot more than most people accomplish, and twice that. About a year ago, Deal was diagnosed with a rare form of leukemia. He had leukemia and that he needed to be prepared for a, for a battle. He entered the battle of his life. Family members say he was a fighter every single day. I don't think anybody else, anybody else, could have done what he did in the last year. They've never seen somebody fight the way he fought. On Monday, Deal's journey with cancer ended, but it's who he was and what he's done that will live on forever. Nobody would have a bad, bad thing to say about him. As a matter of fact, they, you see him light up when they talk about Tom. He's the best son anybody could ever wish for. Everybody that came in to give me a hug would say, I'm Tom. My Tom. He was everybody's Tom. Deal is survived by his wife, four children, his sister, mother, and father. His badge will be retired and he will be promoted to captain. This means he'll be the youngest captain in the police department's history. In the studio tonight, Rachel Monjovi, News 4 at 11.
In Dunkirk, a 22-year-old woman faces charges after authorities say she stole a credit card from someone and spent more than $3,000. The Chautauqua County Sheriff's Office says Ashley Ayers made 75 fraudulent charges over several months. She was arrested today on a warrant and charged with identity theft, grand larceny, and unlawful possession of personal identification information. Ayers was sent to the county jail on $15,000 bail. Around the world, U.S. officials confirm North Korea attempted to launch a missile from an eastern coastal city, but say the launch appears to have ended in failure. The attempt comes as tensions are high between the country and the United States. North Korea showed off its military at a parade celebrating its founder's birthday. They warned of launching the missile. We In Buffalo and across the nation, protesters are demanding President Donald Trump release his tax returns. Crowds gathered in Niagara Square today. It was a peaceful demonstration. The protests fall on tax day, which is normally April 15th. This year, it's been pushed to Tuesday the 18th. While the peace protests here were peaceful, it was a different story across the country. In Berkeley, California, especially, violent fights broke out between anti-Trump and pro-Trump groups. Demonstrators want the president to release his tax returns there. He's the first not to do it in 40 years. I'm here because I want Donald Trump to release his taxes. What do you think they'll reveal? Maybe some ties with Russia. Well, they want to hit me with brass knuckles on the blind side. We're here for free speech. They don't want that. They want confrontation. President Donald Trump is at his Mar-a-Lago estate in Florida this weekend. He did not respond to the protests. On the fourth anniversary of the deadly Boston Marathon attacks, the community is holding a remembrance throughout the city. Two pressure cooker bombs were set off near the finish line of the marathon, killing three people and injuring more than 200 others. Community members spent the day volunteering and performing random acts of kindness. Paul Burton was there. Under a peaceful, bright, sunny morning, a sacred wreath laying service takes place on Boylston Street. Here, no words are spoken as the governor and the mayor help lay wreaths along with the families who lost loved ones four years ago. Boston Marathon survivor Heather Abbott says she'll never forget. You know, I always think about that and remember them, um, but I hope that the rest of the day will be, you know, celebrating what's happened that's good since then. Heather is talking about oh, yeah, one yeah. Boston day, spreading acts of kindness around the city, turning sadness into service. It's about taking something that was a, a sad, sad tragedy in our city and turning it into positive. And from donating blood to planting flowers, one Boston day is in full bloom. To me personally, I think it means to be involved, to understand the needs of the community, and to kind of help address those needs. And PBD Square in Dorchester, a full-scale landscape makeover in honor of Martin Richard. 13-year-old Mava Doherty is learning a valuable lesson. We're spreading Martin's message by helping out the community. What is that message? Um, no more hurting people, please. Then, at 249, a moment of silence to remember the lives lost. Martin Richard's father, Bill, says his son's legacy of peace is as vibrant and as beautiful as the flowers they planted. In one Boston day, while it's about hanging wreaths and reflecting, it's about moving forward for us as a family and as a community. On the way at 11, celebrating a major milestone, the accomplishment and rich history behind the Colored Musicians Club. Plus, he is just one day old, but he is already an internet sensation. We'll get a closer look at April the Giraffe's baby boy. And a very warm night across western New York. We're tracking some changes on the way for your Easter Sunday and uh, what to expect for the week ahead coming up in your forewarned forecast.